Okay, so today's plan is to talk a bit about audience and reach and to make yet more suet for the birds because they eat it because that's what birds do. The local grackly things, starlings, have discovered that I make a suet that they like. So they descend in an entire flock and they jockey to get to the suet blocks and, they jo and it's an hour and the suet's gone. We only put out bird food and suet once a week <clears throat> because if you put it out constantly and refill it constantly, the birds become dependent upon it and in a snow situation, if you don't put it out, they could have a problem. But if you get them to the point where this is a nice treat, then they come, but they're not dependent upon Anyway, I'm making some suet. It's not really suet. I'm also making another cup of coffee, except I totally trashed my coffee cup a little while ago. I'm not even going to go into how I made it gross, but I made my coffee cup gross, so I have to get a clean coffee cup. So, today's suet, I need the right size pan. That is not the right size pan. So that whole clean dishes nest there is duplicated with clean pots and pans over here as well. Because we don't have enough cupboard space or we have too many things. I'm going to vote for too many things. On the other hand, I only have one pan this size. So it's not like I have too many things. I just lack organizational skill. Okay, so I'm going to put some lard in that. And the ratio for no seed suet... I even wrote these down. So no seed suet and bread block suet. And I'm going to do a variation of the two. But the ratio is one cup oil to two cups dry. Absorbent dry. If it seeds, they're not absorbent. I don't do seed suet because we have plenty of bird seed out there. All right. Give me a second. Hey, there were tomatoes in there. I did not know that. my wonderful loving husband bought some tomatoes a while back and put them in the bottom of the refrigerator without telling me. It's a problem. So, cheap. Okay? Really, really cheap. It's for the birds. It's also for my world's best muffin mix recipe. Or muffin recipe. And for lardy cake. And for deep frying occasionally. But mostly it's for the birds. And I need approximately one cup. One of the things in old home ec classes they taught us was the eyeball. That's a quarter cup. I could put it in the cup and measure it and I'll, it, I'm right. It's a quarter cup. I really wish they did the old home ec classes instead of, well, no. I really wish they continued the old, old home ec classes and added the modern living classes or whatever they're called that Dave and took, which was 20 years ago, so I don't know what they do these days. But the old home ec classes taught you things like how to determine your measure, where you take a ruler and put your thumb down and then you find where on your spread is six inches here and then you can always measure six inches. That was a standard thing that they taught to girls. Boys got to go to shop class and that was the problem because half of school should be shop and home ec and how to live. The things that you assume the parents will teach a child that the parents don't teach. Because the parents assume that the school will teach a child. I don't know. So I'm doing the lard. 
and I can smell rancid oils because I'm a super taster. Most people can't, but this particular masa, which was actually a mix, I sent him to go get um, masa, and he brought back this, and if you read the labels, it's instant masa tamale mix. I don't have the other label, but it's 50% masa and 50% cornmeal. And what I wanted him to get, same company, was this, which is pure masa. Okay? Because I have my own cornmeal. Anyway, this one is about four or five months old, and it just, it smells rancid. Okay, it's got that rancid oil smell. And it shouldn't. It should never, it shouldn't be that old. But it is. So I'm going to use that, and I'm going to use oatmeal. And that's going to be my two cups for the birds. Anyway, my coffee just finished. <laughs> now it's too hot to drink, and I have to put creamer in it reach not necessarily on the marketing point of view but marketing too and in fact we'll start with marketing because your marketing is worthless if you don't have the reach when I was doing the events and actively marketing books I was regularly friending people now don't do the standard bullshit trick of friending people and immediately sending them marketing information. Hi, you're my new friend. Buy my book. Don't do that. I put my teeth in. Um, just don't do it. Okay. But you have to constantly have new people coming in because the people already there have already bought your book. You know? And you have to be constantly reaching out and reaching out and helping other people and reaching out and reaching out. And I'm a hermit. That is my natural state of being is hermit. I'm not going to say I'm an introvert, but I'm a hermit. I have left this house once since February 27th and I didn't have a choice. If you're not making new friends, if you're not reaching out to new markets and new crowds, you'll saturate and your return will slowly but surely go away. I've quit. I've been streamlining my, I was trying to keep my Facebook account at 808 people because, you know, Hawaii, 808. But now I'm in the 730s and I'm probably going to drop it down to 626, which is Stitch my event page and my personal writer page are dormant. My comic page is dormant. Between those three pages I have about 5,000 unique views. It's dormant. I'm letting it sleep. I'll come back to it later. Rebrand it. Do something else. I think I have my shirt on backwards. No, nope. It's just pulling on my neck because my neck is sensitive because, you know, hey. <sighs> There's an episode of um, WKRP in Cincinnati. Yes, I'm that old. I saw these live. I loved that show. That was one of my favorite shows. And there's an episode where Johnny, whatever his name is, the stoner, there's a, the city's having a garbage strike and there's garbage everywhere and, and everybody's upset and he's the middle of the night DJ who plays rock music and gets high and he makes an offhand comment at 3 a.m. in the morning if you don't like the garbage strike just take your garbage down to City Hall and let them take care of it and the next day people start taking the garbage to City Hall dropping it off on the front steps he's not there he went home he comes in that night, and everybody's like, Oh my God, what did you do? And the police are investigating. And he's getting ready for his show, and he's usually really, really confident and you know, has a good show. And you know, used to be a rock star, and now he's a, a DJ. And the one guy goes, Dude, you don't understand. 30,000 people dropped their garbage off. He's like, 30,000 people don't listen to me. Maybe 300. Maybe 300. That's it. And he goes in to do his show and he chokes 
and one of the other DJs, the African American guy, has to run in to save the dead air. Because he chokes, he can't talk. 30,000 people are listening. It, that's. The rest of the show is fun. I mean, everybody quotes the, the turkey quote, you know, as far as God is my witness, I thought turkeys could fly. That show had. Once every three episodes had something that brilliant. The first presentation of a truly autistic person as a character, which they made fun of, but they also accepted. You know, um, I loved that show. Anyway, audience, I do my YouTube video. Most of them get six, seven, maybe 12 views. Thank you. I'm not doing these videos to go viral and have a big... I can't get that spoon to balance. It can sit on these. There we are. I'm not doing it to get a big audience. I don't want a big audience. If I wanted a big audience, I would start my, my broadcast episode, whatever, with, Hi, and if you like the show, click that like button and hit subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon. If you notice it, every single established YouTube channel does that at the beginning or the end of every single YouTube and half the time they do it in the middle as well there's a reason because if you really like this and you catch this episode and you want to see more hit the like icon hit the bell you know follow me yeah I the other thing they do is they do okay first of all they'd be right about here so you can see their hands. And then they talk with their hands because it engages the reader. It tells the reader that they're really thinking about what they're saying. And we've talked about this before. I don't see a point. I, to me, this is, I just had a couple of friends drop by and we're having coffee. That's my video outtake. To me, this is, my husband is autistic and has problems maintaining eye contact, but he's fine with the video. So if I have something I need to say to him and I need him to hear it, I'll say it on the video. And then he'll cagely avoid that specific video because he knows there's something in it he doesn't want to, I don't know. He catches about every third video. He claims he catches them all, but he doesn't. Okay, listen to this, not the slurping. The slurping's because it's hot. Can you hear me swallow? That's how tight my throat is. It's really, really tight. Audience. Figure out what you want for an audience. Narrow it down. Don't splatter shot. If you want to just have a conversation with friends, then tailor your videos to friends. If you want to build an audience, don't do quite so many videos as I'm doing because it turns people off. Some people do one video a day and there's marketing that says one three minute video a day will get watched. But one seven minute video a day will not get watched. Okay. Um, you have to tailor. You have to Figure out where your niche is and go from there. Ah, I can put that in there too. Found this in the bottom of a box. So this will be my oatmeal. It expired April 24th, 2016. I think it's expired. How about you? That means it went across the ocean to Hawaii and back in a box. Which means there might be bugs in here. They're dead, but there might be bugs in here. But I am sure the birds will love it. Mostly it's crumbs and a few nuts. That's how easy it is to make suet. Melt the oil. Dump some stuff in. If you got bugs, it's better. And if you get weevils or something, save that for the birds. We had weevils one time in Pennsylvania, and I made suet blocks. And I'm trying to get the bottom of the jar to loosen up. There we go. I made suet blocks and put it out for the birds outside my kitchen window. And the cardinals just went crazy for it. And it was awesome. 
and it was a way to kill the bugs so they weren't alive and, and making more bugs. It was a way to use... Oh, that smells so rancid. Oh. Rancid oil is one of my, my kryptonites. I can't stand it. It really gets to me. And people will serve you food that was made with rancid oil because if you're not a super taster, you can't taste it. Okay, it's kind of like that cilantro gene or the durian gene. You're not going to notice if your oil is rancid. Think about fryer oil that's really, really old and gross. And it's on par with that, but slightly worse. Now I need to put that into something to form up. And I think what I will do... Yeah, I should have thought it out in advance. I'm just going to use this. And that's all there is to it. I gotta move the space. Anyway, I lost track. I do my videos for a small market. Stop by and have coffee with me, we'll chat. If you have a subject you want me to talk about, you can comment. In all honesty, I have significant memory impairment issues these days. And I have avoidance issues. And I might see it and plan to respond and forget. And I might see it and go, ooh, and not respond because avoidance. But I will try. I will give you that. I will honestly try. You know? Um, the two examples off of one post that I saw this morning were Cheyenne, the lady said something about, I was right about the Valer volume. Thank you very much. I honestly don't remember what it was I said about volume. I'm sure I told you to take it or not take it and that it's a hormone and that it's great for seizures and it'll make your breasts grow. That's about all I can think of that I would have said about Valium, okay? But Valium's a good drug. I've been on it my whole life. I love Valium. Um, and Connie made a comment about how do you get off soda? Because she has diabetes and she's trying to get off soda and she's having problems. And my thought on that, I'm looking for something to press this with because it's too hot to handle physically. So I'm looking around for something that I can use. Like a dirty plastic bag, you know? Anyway, um, Connie asked about getting off of soda, breaking the habit. And my standard advice on that is first you have to admit to yourself that soda is an actual addiction. It is as ingrained as an opiate addiction. Okay, you're not going to break it easily. The first thing to do is break the sugar habit by going to diet sodas. Diet sodas are mean and nasty to your body to begin with. I don't like them for your body. They're, they're harmful. But if you're diabetic, the sugar is more harmful. So go to diet sugar. Then go to a brand of sugar you don't like that much. A brand of soda you don't like that much. And then from there, wean off. But understand that your body thinks it's a fucking opiate. And your body does not want to wean off those minerals. Okay, the potassiums and whatnot. I have seen a lot of people, this is not going to hold together this time. Okay. So for some reason that this is not holding together, it's not clumping. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera. This camera placement is not the best. Anyway, it's got large cracks, which means it's gonna to turn to a crumbly mess and just go into the bird feeder when it goes out. But it's bird food, and I made it. Your body doesn't wanna get off the sodas. I've seen a lot of people have success by switching to tonic waters. I've seen a lot of people have success with switching to ginger ales. But your body doesn't want off. There's chemicals in there that are excitotoxins that you will crave. That's my take on that. It's been 20 minutes, which is a bit long. So I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye. And I will see you tomorrow. Resisting the urge to make a kissy face at my husband. <laughs>